Okay, people, welcome back. And today we're going to look at my ancient DNA through Jed Match. And there's no affiliation with me. Um, I've actually been signed up to this site since I had my ancestry test done. I found out about this. And you can, it's not an actual testing site. You just upload your DNA results to this site and they have an in-depth look, a sort of deeper look. Uh, but I wasn't so sure how to use the tools and things like that on the site. So I was just looking over there and I've, I've realized I've been using the wrong calculators and stuff like that and expecting certain results. And there's specific calculators for specific ethnicities. Uh, and there's the ancient DNA, which we'll be looking at today, guys. Anyway, how to use the add mix mixture Jed Match tool. You might already know about part of your ethnicity, but many people want to find out about their heritage because they want to know about parts of their ancestry that they didn't know about. <sighs> Sorry about sounding bunged up. I've had a, a short-term illness, should we say, from China. Jed Ma Match Admixture Tool is perfect for this type of thing because when you do your test results, Admixture shows percentage of who in different regions has genetic similarities with you. Several researchers have created calculators using their own databases of DNA information acquired through research programs. We can use these calculators to run your DNA through GEDmatch to obtain various ethnicity estimates. The GEDmatch admixture calculators are available on the DNA application tool list once the upload process is complete. So I hope you've seen this, guys. I'll have a quick check on StreamYard. Yep. Right. So selecting a GEDmatch calculator. So you've got the MDLP Eurogenes Dodcad Rapa World. Ethio Helix, Jed Rossa DNA, and Punt DNA. There are currently five projects that offer calculators in GEDmatch. To find out more about each project, please refer to the table below for a short summary of what they do. You may also want to reference one that matches your ancestry for easier use. So the best GEDmatch admixture calculator for African ancestry. So if you've got mainly African ancestry, you want to use the Ethio Helix K10 Africa only calculator. And this is for your particular ethnicity. And this is for uh, calculating Native American, and that's Eurogenes K36 and MDLP World 22. Uh, sorry, Eurogenes is for mostly European. Uh, MDLP World 22, although they cover a wide geographic range, there's a large option of the Native American categories in this project. So if you've got Native American, or you think you have, this is the one for you. Best Jed Match Admixture Calculator for Asian Ancestry. The Harappa World Calculator Model is advised if you're Asian American. So we'll avoid that one. Uh, for European Ancestry, the best project and calculator combo for those ancestries larger European is the K36 calculator. Try the Eurogenes J test model if you have European ancestry as well as Ashkenazi Jewish background. And the best match, GED match, admixture calculator for ancient DNA is the Eurasia K6 calculator. So this is the one we'll be looking at today uh, for the ancient stuff, guys. So this is just, that's just a brief, and I'm going to show you now what calculators to use and what we'll be using today. Um, and like I said, I've done a stream before and you'll see my number coming up, my, my test number. And you can use that if you want to have a, if you want to have a shot at this site, uh, you can use, you're more than welcome to use my number. Um, so anyway, we'll stop sharing that. You'll present the other screen. Right, people. So, like anything, if you pay extra money, you can become like a f you get other tools for this, but we'll, we'll stick with the free stuff. So, we're we're going to look at the archaic DNA, guys. Not the archaic, sorry. What am, I, what am I talking about? The ancient. So we're going to go up to admixture. This one here, admixture heritage. Right, we're going to that one. And we'll select 
the Jed Rossier DNA, because this is the ancient one, the Jed Rossier. So if you want to check your ancient DNA, Jed Rossier. Put your kit number in, if you've got one. And the ancient Eurasia K6. So you're using this calculator, the ancient Eurasia K6. And this is the results for the, the ancient DNA. And so I come up, ancestral North Eurasian, 19%. That's the red, 19%. Ancestral South Eurasian, 1.79%. That must be the little orange part. And we've got West European Hunter Gatherer, 43.25. So that's the largest proportion. That'll be the yellow. That's 43.25%. And strangely enough, Natufian, and I thought that sounds like African or something like that. Like, and uh, that's 35.62, so that's a massive, this, this large green khaki area. I was like, what's well, Natufian? So guys, 35% Natufian and 43% West European hunter-gatherer, and we just say 20% ancestral Eurasian from North and South. Um. So what's Natufian? I was like, Natufian, we, we know what hunter-gatherers are, the, the, the hunter-gatherers and the, the farmers, but what's a Natufian? So, once again, stop screen, present, share screen, Chrome tab, and I'll have a quick Wikipedia. And guys, I don't know advise all your research to be around wick people but it's good just to get a quick glimpse of something so the natufian culture the natufian culture is a late epipaleolithic archaeological culture of the levant dating to around fifteen thousand to eleven thousand five hundred years ago the culture was unusual in that it supported a sedentary or semi sedentary population even before the introduction of agriculture. The Natufian communities may be the ancestors of the builders of the first Neolithic settlements of the region, which may have been the earliest in the world. So this is in Israel, the Levant area, before it was called Israel. It was called the Levant. You see here, and it covers the whole the whole shebang there, the whole area. The world's oldest known evidence of the production of bread-like foodstuff has been found at Shube, Shubeka 1, a 14,000-year-old site in Jordan's northeastern desert. 4,000 years before the emergence of agriculture in southwest West Asia. In addition, the oldest known evidence of possible beer brewing dating to approximately 13,000 BP was found at Rakafet Cave in Mount Carmel near Haifa in Israel, although it may be simply be a result of an organic and unintentional fermentation. Generally, both Natufians exploited wild cereals and hunted animals, including gazelles. Archaeogenetic analysis has revealed derivation of later Neolithic to Bronze Age Levantines, primarily from Natufians, besides substantial admixture from Chalcolithic Anatolians. Dorothy Garrod coined the term Natufian based on her excavations at the Shab Shakba Cave, Wadi and Natuf, near the town of Shukba in the western occupied Palestine territories. The Natufian culture was discovered by British archaeologist Dorothy Garrod during her excavations of Shukba Cave in the Judean Hills on the west bank of the Jordan River. Prior to the 1930s, the majority of archaeological work taking place in British Palestine was biblical archaeology focused on historic periods and little was known about the region's prehistory. In 1928, Garrod was invited by the British School of Archaeology in Jerusalem to excavate Shukba Cave, where prehistoric stone tools had been discovered by Perry Mallon four years earlier. She discovered a layer sandwiched between the Upper Paleolithic and Bronze Age deposits characterized by the presence of microliths. She identified this 
with the Mesolithic, a transitional period between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, which was well presented in Europe, but had not yet been found in the Near East. A year later, when she discovered similar material at El Wadi Terrace, Garrod suggested the name the Natufian culture after Wadi and Natuf that ran close to Shukba. Over the next two decades, Garrod found Natufian material at several of her pioneering excavations in Mount Carmel region, including El Wad, Kebara, and Taboon. As did the French archaeologist René Nouvel, firmly establishing the Natufian culture in the region, regional prehistoric chronology. As early as 1931, both Garrod and Nouvelle drew attention to the presence of stone sickles and Natufian assemblages and the possibility that this represented a very early agriculture. Radiocarbon dating places Natufian culture an epoch from the terminal Pleistocene to the very beginning of the Holocene, a time period between 12,500 and 9,500 BC. This period is commonly split in two subperiods, early Natufian and late Natufian. The late Natufian mostly, most likely occurred, occurred in tandem with the younger Dreas. The Levant hosts more than 100 kinds of cereals, fruits, nuts and other edible parts of plants and the flora of the Levant during the Natufian period was not the dry, barren and thorny landscape of today, but rather woodland. That's interesting. The Natufian appeared at the time of the bowling alarod warming, before temperatures dropped drastically again during the Younger Dryas. T temperatures would rise again at the end of the Younger Dryas, with the onset of the Holocene and the Neolithic Revolution, climate and post-glacial expansion in the Near East based on the analysis of Greenland ice cores. The Natufian developed in the same region as the earlier Kebaran industry is generally seen as a successor which evolved out of elements within that preceding culture. There were also other industries in the region such as the Meshubian culture of the Negev and Sinai which are sometimes distinguished from the Kebaran or believed to have evolved involved in the evolution of the Natufian. More generally, there are discussions of similarity of, of these cultures with those found in coastal North Africa. Graham Barker notes that there are similarities in the respective archaeological records of the Natufian culture of the Levant and of contemporary foragers in coastal North Africa across the late Pleistocene and early Holocene boundary. According to Isabella de Groot and Louise Humphrey, Natufians practiced the Ibo, I, ibero maurusian and Capaci Capsian custom of sometimes extracting their maxillary, central incisors, their upper front teeth. Ofer Bar Yosef has argued that there are signs of influences coming from North Africa to the Levant, citing the microburin technique and microlithic forms such as arched backed blade lips and lamula points. But recent research has shown the presence of arched backed bladelets, lamula points and the use of microburin technique was already apparent in the Nebekian industry of the Eastern Levant. And Mahar et al. states that the many technological nuances that have always been highlighted as significant during the Tufian were already present during the early and middle EP and not, in most cases, represent a radical departure in knowledge, traditional behaviour. So the settlement settlements occur mostly in Israel and Palestine. This could be deemed the core of the Natufian culture, but Israel is a place that has been excavated more frequently than other places, hence a greater number of sites. During the years, more sites have been found outside the core of Israel and Palestine, stretching in what is now Lebanon, Jordan, the Sinai Peninsula, and the Negev Desert. The settlements in the Natufian culture were larger and more permanent. Some Natufian sites had stone-built architecture. Ein Mahala is an example of round stone structures. Cave sites are also seen frequently during the Natufian culture. El Wad is a Natufian cave site with occupation in the front part of the cave, also called the Tet. Some Natufian sites were located in the forest steppe areas and other near island mountains. The Natufian settlements appear to be the first to exhibit evidence of food storage. The tall Natufian sites have storage facilities, but they have been identified at certain sites. The Natufian had Microlithic industry centered on short blades and bladelets. 
the microburin technique was used. Geometric microliths used lunettes, trapezes, and triangles. There are back blades as well. A special type of, type of retouch, Hell one retouch, is characteristic for early Natufian. In the late Natufian, the Haraf point, a typical arrowhead made from a regular blade, became common and negative. Some scholars use it to define a separate culture in the Harifian. So sickles, mortars, the Ansakiri lovers. So it's like two figures that are entwined. And the Tufian burial, burial, Homo 25 from Elwad Cave. So the Tufian grave goods are typically made of shell, teeth, or red deer, bones, and stone. There are pendants, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, and bell ornaments as well. In 2008, the 2,400-12,000 cattle BC grave and our parents' significant Natufian female was discovered in a ceremonial pit in the Halazon Tit cave in northern Israel. Media reports referred to this person as a shaman. The burial contained the remains of at least three aurochs and 86 tortoises, all of which are thought to have been brought to the site during a funeral feast. The body was surrounded by tortoise shells, the pelvis of a leopard, forearm of a wild boar, Wing tip of a golden eagle and the skull of a stone marten. At Ain Malhala in northern Israel, Anatolia, obsidian and shellfish from the Nile Valley have been found. The source of malachite beads is still unknown. Epipalothic Natufians carried Parthenocarpic figs from Africa to the southern eastern corner of the Fertile Crescent, 10,000 BC. So, interesting. Interesting that I have a connection to the, this ancient Natufian culture that I've never heard of, and it predates a lot of cultures in the area. Just something else to think about. And like I said, guys, if you just want to use Jed Match, go back on this video, check out my, my number I use, and play around with it before you get your own or whatever. You're more than welcome. Man. Anyway, people, if I don't speak to you before Christmas, have a great Christmas, a happy new year. I'll see you all soon. Cheers.